Hello class, this is section 7.4 and in this video we are going to see a proof of the convolution property. So remember that convolution is a type of product so that the Laplace transform of the convolution of f and g is equal to the Laplace transform of f times the Laplace transform of g. So let's uh, see how we can show this. First annotation, let's write capital of f as fs as the Laplace transform of little f and the capital of gs as the Laplace transform of little g just for notational convenience and let's see so we have a Laplace transform of f times the Laplace transform of g this being equal to fs gs but this, of course, is just the same thing as uh, gs times the Laplace transform of f. And that's just going to be e minus s tau, little f tau, d tau. OK. And notice here that g of s is a constant with respect to tau. So this is a function of s, and this is an integral with respect to tau. So we can just move the g of s inside the integral. It's tau f tau g of s d tau. We can then write down replace capital G with the definition of the Laplace transform. So that's infinity to zero e minus s Let's use sigma this time, just to avoid confusion with the tau that's related to the f. So e minus s sigma, g sigma, d sigma. So we have this, d tau. The next step is to perform a change of variables. So let's go from sigma to little t. So sigma is equal to t minus tau. And for this change of variables, we want to treat t as the variable we're changing to. So d sigma is equal to dt. We're treating tau as a constant here. So anyway, let's uh, just leave everything the same in the outside of the integral. Oops, sorry, this should be tau. So we have, instead of sigma, t minus tau, so e minus s, t minus tau, g instead of sigma, t minus tau, and d sigma replaced with d little t, and a d tau on the outside. All right, so one thing we can do is that we can expand this out a little bit. So we have e minus, sorry, e plus, e plus s tau times e minus s t, g t minus tau d t, d tau. So notice here that the s, e s tau term is a constant with respect to t. There, there's no little t here in the es tau term, so we can bring it out. This equal to infinity to zero, e minus s tau, f tau, e s tau. We've removed move that from outside of the little, the, the inside integral. So this is just going to be e minus s t, g t minus tau dt d tau and of course the e minus s tau and the es tau terms cancel and what we have left is f tau integral e minus st g t minus tau dt d tau and as a final step, 
this again this integral is the inside integral is an integral with respect to t and little f is a function of tau so this f of tau is a constant with respect to t so we can bring it inside the integral so now we have uh, f e minus st g t minus tau dt tau. Next thing we can do is change the order of integration. So we have the same integral. But this time, instead of dt and then d tau, we have d tau and then dt. I'll put a little note here. It's not clear that we can do this. And in fact, we are allowed to change the order of the integration from d tau to dt if we apply certain conditions on f and g. And this will always work for all the functions for which the Laplace transform exists. But the proof of this fact is beyond the scope of this class. So I'm not going to go through it. So just trust me that we are allowed to switch the d tau and the dt. But please don't do this um, in real life unless you know that you can. Um, this actually requires some technical explanation. It's not as simple as saying that, oh, we can just switch the dt and d tau. But for the purposes of this class, we can do this in this proof. But we made, made the switch. And now, the thing to notice is that e minus st is now a constant respect to tau. So this is the integral respect to tau now, and e minus st is a constant. So we can pull it out of the inside integral. And we have f tau g t minus tau d tau dt. So notice that this integral here looks a lot like the convolution, except that the integral is from 0 to infinity instead of from 0 to t. To solve that problem, we have to resort to some shenanigans. So let's assume that g of x equals 0 whenever x is negative. So whenever you plug a negative number into g, you get 0. And the reason we can assume that is that for the entire chapter 7, we only needed little f and little g to be defined for for positive x or positive t. So we can, since you only define f and g for a positive x, we can define the negative to be whatever we want. So let's just say that it's 0. But notice that if we say that g is 0 whenever the input is negative, whenever this integral, whenever the integral exceeds little t, the input of g is going to be negative, and so g is going to be 0. So we can just ignore every term in which the integral goes above little t. So this is actually going to be equal to integral of 0 to t, f tau, g t minus tau, d tau, d t. And this, of course, is just the convolution of f and g. And we are left with the definition of the Laplace transform. So this is clearly just going to be the Laplace transform of f convolution with g. But that's the product of our Laplace of f times Laplace of g. So we are done. We've shown that Laplace of f times Laplace of g. It was a pretty long calculation requiring a lot of uh, integration voodoo, but I hope you guys got something out of this.